The Nigerian Economic Summit Group organized a stakeholder session to address the gender issues in Nigeria. The aim of the convergence was to discuss gender-related matters. The conversation was chaired and convened by Nkechi Onyesom, who is the Corporate Services Head at the Nigerian Economic Summit Group. Everybody has a mother, or a sister, or a daughter, or a girlfriend. So everybody is linked in the discussion on women. We have to get to a point where we recognize that women and men are, I won't say the same, but I'll say the same. I'm careful not to say the same because um, the special qualities a woman has, a man may not have it. And the special qualities a man has, a woman will not have it. So uh, I'm not advocating that as if women do uh, uh, three months maternity, men should do three months maternity. I'm not advocating for that. I'm just saying recognize the special qualities a woman has and recognize the special qualities a man has and treat us when it comes to the workplace as equals. The conversations held were geared around validating identified priority areas of focus as well as developing a community of practice. Representatives from international organizations such as the United Nations, UNICEF, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Ford Foundation, amongst others, were present and shared their thoughts on the subject's matter. We found through research, McKinsey has done a lot of research, that shows that companies that have gender equality, particularly at the highest levels, the boards and executive committees, have a very clear edge. They do, um, they perform about 34 to 20 to 34% better financially from just this measure. Very important, particularly in the area of digital inclusion and financial inclusion, that women must sit at the table, must sit and have equal opportunities, must sit and have equal privileges at the table. We're persuaded of the fact that growth, economic growth that is not inclusive will never develop, will never deliver development for Nigeria. Reducing inequality is an overarching priority of Ford Foundation in the 21st century. And gender inequality is right there at the top in terms of our priorities. The two industries I, I occupy, sports and real estate, for sports, we only have about 8% of women in leadership. And for real estate, less than 20%. Because we have those poor um, ratios, what happens is that it, has, it comes down that you know, when you, have, you don't have women in leadership, you obviously don't have women in participation. And despite the fact that we occupy you know, um, these places, even the leaders are not able to function properly. And our approach for gender and what I would say is the outcome, the hopeful outcome of our meeting is we allow key stakeholders across public and private sector collectively to own and champion issues around women through the NESG structured approach to deliberating, agreeing and advocating on policy focal points. We will act as a facilitating, facilitating block for addressing policy areas regarding women and interactions with the policy commission. The aim is at least one or two of us in this room will become part of the policy commission. So when they are discussing any issue, your role is to advocate for something in the interest of women. There was a breakout session of the NESG community of practice on gender. The immediate short term to do is to declare um, state of emergency on education across board. As soon as that is done, then that affects the budgeting. Because the only way government shows political commitment is by funding. So in this instance, we are advocating, because of time, that there has to be an inclusive budgeting that takes care of equity, adequacy, and timeliness in terms of funding for education. The review of existing laws for identifying which are gender discriminatory and need to be repealed, um, yeah, and reformed, or reformed, or even repealed outright, and the sections that need to be expunged. Um, advocacy and enlightenment of key stakeholders. And when we talk about on the short term key stakeholders, we're looking more at law enforcement agencies, we're looking at prosecutors and law enforcement agencies because you know it's a carrot and stick thing. Um, we talked a lot about enforcement. When it comes to our laws, we have some very good laws. The issue is in enforcement and implementation and sentencing. So we talked about also sentencing guidelines. 
Uh, more long term is obviously getting more female judges, getting more female prosecutors, putting women in uh, strategic positions that, so, that, so that, you know, these rights can be enforced. But in the meantime, we can look at strengthening the, 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 the sentencing guidelines and ensuring that there is enforcement. One of the things we talked about clearly was quota. We felt that we, we, think, we tend to shy away from the word quota. Even in, a, in the U.S., there's affirmative action because they needed to bring more blacks into the education system or more, or, or more disadvantaged people into the education system. And we feel that that is where we are here in Nigeria, that women are not being brought into where they should be to take up their rightful position. At the end of the day, recommendations were made by the various COPs and would be handed over to adequate bodies for necessary implementation. For Plus TV Africa, Irene Ivani.